In this section, pillar two and three, this is um, about deploying and managing critical remote edge infrastructure uh, with, uh, with Node-Grid. And it's also about how does an, a distributed branch infrastructure get to, um, get to be not only managed, but also uh, we carry the data as well in, in pillars two and three. So it's exactly the question that you were asking. So the problems in, in this uh, section is, um, is the factors that uh, initially start downtime and lead to truck rolls, right? So that's the first challenge. And uh, the, the factors that come in to, uh, that create downtime, uh, a lot of it actually these days is human error. Uh, it's about uh, lack of ability to automate, uh, to eliminate that human error. Uh, there's a lot of vendor lock-in that hampers the automation to actually achieve the previous, uh, uh, to solve the previous problem. And then there is that remote access um, security and, uh, and limitations that exist. So uh, example that, uh, you know, we, we, we solved for the customers is, you know, uh, out in an in a oil uh, rig, how do I stand up a Palo Alto firewall and an SD-WAN with LTE and satellite uh, in a secure way, such that uh, it just all loads up, gets licensed, all the plumbing comes up uh, in an automated fashion from the cloud, right? And and so that you you know you push a button, you get an outcome, and that's what ZPE Systems uh, does as as far as the solution goes. Uh, the other example is uh, you know monitoring and uh, and auto recovering from a failed equipment uh, on a side of a train track, right? Uh, there's all these different huts, I call them that uh, operate a lot of critical uh, pieces of equipment, uh, you know, cell towers, manufacturing floors. So how do I make sure that I predict uh, issues, I'm continuously monitoring, and if something happens, I'm able to uh, automatically, ideally, recover from it, rebuild the entire system and bring it back online without, uh, without any human being involved in the process. And there, there is another use, uh, use case, right, that we actually help to solve. And that one is basically how it's done today is you pre-configure the, your devices, you ship to the to the edge, right? And you or you send some some of your um, IT people to go and configure, but they are carrying your certificates in a USB or something like that. So um, a customer came to us, right? And they deployed these large retail, um, very very uh, visible retail stores. And they were concerned about how am I going to deploy my data, my my store, without having configuration uh, preloaded, because I risk to uh, lose the, the equipment during the shipment, and now I have a backdoor to my network. Right. So, so having a solution that can do zero touch provisioning can be just replace replace it if the the box doesn't arrive to the end destination, just send another one that can phone home to the cloud and through a two-side authentication uh, it start, it start being the, uh, the, uh, the um, zero-touch provision over the WAN, right? Uh, a, a solution is what's pretty cr critical for them, right? So that's another use case that uh, this pillar two and three can address. Yeah, and, and pillar three, it builds on pillar two. So it's about uh, managing multiple boxes uh, that uh, need to exist, consolidating them, and also using our device for that branch edge router for uh, the purpose of carrying the data. So then our device becomes the single device that uh, sits at a branch edge. So that's that's pillar pillar two is about managing other devices that are distributed that are part of critical infrastructure, and this pillar three is about uh, us actually replacing a lot of devices so that we are the only device out there and we carry all the traffic. And so this is how deployment looks like in a, in a branch location. And I think this uh, should answer the question that was asked. Single device, and I'll go through the different devices. It's, uh, it has all of the orchestration. It can manage uh, uh, remote uh, infrastructure. It can even manage and connect to other devices of ours to scale out. Uh, and a, a lot of different configurations that we built because of the different customers that have asked for, say, PoE ports or modularity. And I'll, I'll give you a tour of uh, those devices as well. So building this um, stack uh, from the bottom up, the different set of hardware that we have. So these are the NodeGrid uh, service routers from uh, a very small one called the Link all the way to, the, uh, to a modular one, the NetSR. 
uh, all the different uh, uh, sensors that I showed you in the previous uh, uh, presentation also work with the service router series. They are all managed by ZPE Cloud. They send data to NodeGrid Data Lake. And then on top of that, we have applications that pull data from NodeGrid Data Lake and uh, display information from user experience monitoring, environmental monitor monitoring, and um, and can um, you know, and then from there you can imagine all the things that you can do with a data lake uh, of uh, such information. So in contrast, right uh, before we were talking about NodeGrid Manager managing the devices in the data center, right and now we are talking about uh, the cloud offering managing the devices in a distributed manner, right, um, in remote locations. So uh, as you can imagine with uh, such uh, hardware capability, we can take uh, the various devices from routers to firewalls to LTE modems and just consolidate into a single device, right? So that's kind of the first starting point for customers. Some of those features we have, some of them it runs as a, as a VM application. Uh, and and it's about uh, the orchestration of that, but also it's about being a, a target for the uh, the customer's orchestration platform in this case. And all of this happens from our cloud, so you, the customers don't need to build the these capabilities on top. Um, you orchestrate them through our our cloud infrastructure. So it's bought as a solution, uh, not as a pieces of uh, hardware and software. Um, and uh, I'll just uh, give you a little bit of um, uh, detail about the boxes. So uh, the Bolt series, uh, as you notice, it has uh, eight serial ports in the front. So that's uh, the unique capability of this type of hardware is that it's not about just networking. It's also about the serial um, access to the peripherals that are sitting around it and at a remote location, expansion by USB as well. And this allows uh, very simple out-of-band access to remote critical infrastructure and be able to run the different um, uh, workloads to achieve an outcome at, a, uh, at, uh, at global locations. Uh, question a about question. the, oh, go ahead. Yeah. Um, does it only use the 4G, 5G connectivity or you can use NPLS as an underlay? It can use M, M, um, actually, it can use X, um, no, not M, MPLS, but um, yeah, in, the, in this case, I was mixing with um, um, VDSL, but uh, right, the, the interfaces are either 4G, 5G, right? Uh, we're coming up with uh, LoRa um, in, um, in, in terms of a tunnel, in terms of a stack, it's all in the OS. Uh, but if you're connecting via VDSL, right, we also support that. Okay, because when you talk about the SD WAN, then normally you do have this physical uh, interface uh, uh, towards you know your uh, WAN network like MPLS. So that you don't support you. It's purely a wireless device. It, it, uh, sorry. Sorry, Kush, can, can I briefly jump in? Uh, we will show you in, in a second a few more devices which have other networking capabilities. This one has purely, uh, or the Bodesar has purely Ethernet interfaces. All the other ones offer SFP Plus interfaces as well. And then you have the rich set of SFP Plus modules which you can use, so fiber, copper. Um, if you have an MPLS carrier, we, we have the software to terminate the MPLS uh, on those devices. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so, uh, I, was, I was just going through the models uh, to your point. So that, that's the Bolt series. This one is the Gate series with more interfaces, more capabilities, uh, DC powered, um, fanless design. Um, so there is, a, there is a rich set of capabilities from interfacing as well. In many cases, the uh, MPLS actually comes uh, with the Cisco router uh, from the carrier. Uh, but people are worried uh, what happens if that thing locks up. So they connect our serial port to that, the serial port of the, of the MPLS router, and then we, uh, our device can go and uh, fix it if it goes down, right? So that's actually a good application of this box. A question on the Ethernet ports. Are they um, all discrete, meaning can they all be configured as, uh, as a routable port, or are, they, you know, tie, are some of them bundled and tied into as switch ports? Some of them are. Right, uh, so in this example here, 
I tell you have eight ports that are bundled in a switch on the board. Uh, and the, the two SFP uh, interfaces are connected directly to the CPU plus one more LAN. So in this in this particular case, there are three network device and network ports connected directly to the CPU and eight connected to a switch uh, device. It, sorry, sorry to interrupt you again. Uh, probably worthwhile mentioning the eight switch ports are connected through a managed switch who sits inside the box. So you have all the VLANing capabilities. So you could actually VLAN all eight ports out and then terminate each one again on the box and use them individually as well. Okay, and can you assign those? So say, could you assign an SVI, like a VLAN SVI, make that a WAN port on those? Or is that just LAN only? We haven't really segregated or segregated the interfaces out. So we don't have a dedicated VAN interfaces. We don't have dedicated LAN interfaces. So they are all open. You can decide which one is which. So your, your design is uh, more or less up to you. Yeah, so so the perhaps this, the simple answer to your question is these ports are independent and you can assign them any which way that you want to use them. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Um, uh, if, I, I, if I look at the figure on the right side, uh, the, there are vendors listed in the middle. There's a company called uh, UBQ. Uh, so UBQ is an orchestration player. So uh, why would you need them? Uh, you are yourself an orchestration player. Did you get? Renee, my... Do you want to? Do you want to? Uh, <laughs> no. So, Why we did that? But, uh, we we are actually I thought one of the platforms that allow your orchestration. So some of the cases you have the customers they they have their own uh, stack of our orchestration, right? And some of the cases they they want just to be able to uh, complement what they have. So you become here. Right, there was a partnership that we developed with them uh, to, to host uh, uh, their application in our box. So then they were not just touching other boxes, but also ours through the serial connecting to the switch, right, a Cisco switch or, or, or something like that, pushing the configuration through this console port. Right? As you know, right, um, zero touch provision on a switch, on a Cisco switch is only zero touch after you do initial configuration. We, we help to do that first kickoff, first initial configuration on the box. So then, then the switch can become zero touch, right? Okay. So Great. a question about the uh, 4G, 5G stuff, is that uh, bring your own 4G, 5G, or are you partnered with particular carriers? So the, the 4G uh, today is uh, AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile, right? Uh, the okay. module inside, uh, you bring your own uh, SIM card, Right, or we can load for you. The 5G is uh, is 5G ready, right? We're still working with uh, the carriers to establish the 5G. And what, what are you doing in cases where those carriers can't legally operate? Like outside of the US? <laughs> yeah, I know, then, then just the, the module is global, right? Okay. Uh, so we do have deployments right, um, around the world with the cellular. Okay, so we can pick whatever provider we want yeah. otherwise, as long That's as it's correct. compatible with the module. Okay, yeah, thank right. you. That's yeah. And uh, I'm just going to pick up the pace a little bit here. So this is uh, this is the modular box, so the NodeGrid NetSR. So you see the cards at the bottom um, from serial to gigabit. Uh, a couple of noteworthy ones other than the ones you're familiar with from a services router perspective. USB, so you see this dense USB card where you can use them for sensors and extension of this device. Uh, we already talked about the, uh, the M.2 that enables the cellular dedicated storage. And then this one, you see its own compute card. So if you wanted to do, let's say, a big data and your, you know, your own um, processor that uh, uh, did data thinning before it actually went up uh, and get processed and sent up, that's what this uh, one U device allows you to do. So it's you know any, everything you wanted to wish for in in a platform that uh, software could just uh, say go do this and the hardware exists to get that outcome. So I think it's a really cool box here. 
All right. And so the combination of all those boxes, right, the, the service routed, router series, we're talking about, uh, obviously, the connectivity in terms of networking, running the guest OSs, and being a target of uh, orchestration to uh, accomplish the automation that uh, uh, the, the operators are, are looking for, uh, edge compute uh, uh, workloads, and really that converged infrastructure all of those things that uh, you know, you, you sit in meetings and you wonder how how do people do that. At the end of the day, there is a there is a piece of hardware like this that enables software to actually do do things and uh, and reach that outcome and recover from uh, the mistakes and rebuild the entire thing um, to prevent downtime. Uh, this is a real uh, deployment uh, from uh, you know from an oil field. Uh, so these devices, uh, these are hardened devices that were sent out uh, to various locations, uh, blank, and then as they boot up, they go to to reach out to the cloud. They download the various images they need. They do the automatic plumbing. They do the automatic licensing, and uh, the entire infrastructure just comes up. If you want to do it again, or you want to RMA something, or wipe it, uh, and uh, if you're done with it, uh, and uh, all of that is part of that uh, cloud orchestration process that we have. So this outcome is um, is all delivered uh, by ZP without a customer needing to do anything extra other than just uh, getting those images and pushing it down to the op boxes using the cloud. I got a quick question. <clears throat> for for edge deployments, it's, it's pretty common to have, you know, clock and sourcing issues, right? So you know, are you guys doing anything around NTP? Are you guys looking to be like a equivalent of like a Meinberg replacement? Or are you guys even playing in the face of, of, of anything around time sync? And then, you know, if you're going to go there, are you doing anything with BTP? So so today we support NTP as a client or as a server. Right? The other thing that we also support is for the environments where uh, there's no NTP around, we can actually sync with the tower through the cellular tower. Okay, so you guys will do like a stratum two sourcing set for off off the cellular tower for based off of yeah yeah so so the, the implement the implementation use the time from the tower right uh, to then become the NTP server for that um, remote location. Okay. Yeah, great question. All right, um, and so this slide this is a busy slide. Uh, the main point here is uh, is a point that I made at the beginning where when you instrument the entire infrastructure and uh, you, you rely on uh, code, uh, the substrate that that code relies on needs to be hardened, right? You, you don't want the, you know, a, a powerful device like this to, that can do anything it wants to, to not be secure itself, right? So that's where a lot of work Arnaldo and uh, Livio and team did to secure the entire platform from bottom up um, not just encrypted disks and things of that sort, but just ensuring that from the different attack surfaces and attack vectors, they're all taken care of, so that when a vendor, uh, you know, promises their infrastructure to ZPE, they're not worried about um, any of these uh, topics. And that's really why we are the vendor of choice for these top uh, tech companies. Is that you know you don't want to automate, and then all of a sudden somebody else comes and takes advantage of your automation and takes your entire network down. So that's that's I would say is the main takeaway out of this slide is the attention that we built we gave to the security of this platform. And just just to answer the question that was uh, presented earlier, um, the box itself supports SAML, right? A dual octa ping identity ADSF, um, and, uh, and and the cloud itself also supports the same uh, the same authentication. So what we did different, right? Um, as, as we, we look at the implementation in the data center and all the uh, privilege separation that is required in the data center, what we did different for the, the, the branches is that although you authenticate to the cloud, right, that doesn't mean that you are already authenticated to the devices. So you need to go through this process of authentication using single sign-on uh, via Okta, Duo, Ping, ID, and ADSF. Um, uh, it, it, meaning that, that there is a separation from the cloud and the device with the same concerns that we had right, uh, in the data center. So there's a, a bunch more, right, a list of uh, um, items that we 
uh, built in, in, the, in the system to create this uh, foundation, the zero trust uh, secure framework, right? From TPM to, uh, to sign and secure boot uh, with a secured um, encrypted disk uh, with um, two, two side authentication um, uh, through the cloud and with the with the ability to verif tem uh, the verification of the configuration and that uh, if it's tampered with uh, or not and they are the geofencing um, through the system and so so there's there's a, a lot of right, a lot of thoughts and a lot of push from different organizations that we brought in together right and one thing that is interesting here is that everything becomes available to all platforms right so what we have is a single OS Right, um, that, that as we have the privilege to work with these uh, large organizations, then they give us a very interesting use case. Right, uh, we're building this in the OS, and the, in the OS because it's one across all the platforms. Right, um, everybody benefits from the from the interactions that we have in iso in isolation, but then comes together. They come together on on this software across all platforms. All right, so just uh, to give uh, a glimpse into ZPE Cloud, uh, the, the, as you were asking, you know, how do you operate a global infrastructure with respect to configuration, with respect to access to that infrastructure? Uh, you know, one of the keys being that if you want to access uh, one of these devices uh, in, uh, in a remote location, we've taken, uh, we've put a, actually special authentication in place that because you're, all, you know, you're, you're logged into the cloud, that doesn't mean that you can actually log into the entire infrastructure. So uh, multiple levels of uh, security and uh, uh, management uh, and telemetry to gain that 360 view uh, as, and also the 360 control of that entire global infrastructure. And Rene is going to be demoing uh, elements of this. So on top of uh, the cloud, we have these cloud apps, right? So uh, the the cloud does the management configuration, but then we have we generate a lot of uh, uh, a lot of the different vectors that sit in our Node Grid data lake, as an example for other apps to sit to sit on top of. We, we're going to cover most of this probably in a uh, in an upcoming session, but uh, just to give you a glimpse into some of those apps. Uh, with Palo Alto uh, Prisma Access as part of their uh, SASE, uh, we, we've integrated such that our box can uh, not only allow you to manage and log into the SASE framework, but also be that on-ramp for, uh, for Prisma Access in a very seamless fashion. So that's uh, these cloud apps enable that. The other one is the Node Grid Data Lake. Uh, so uh, data points from, um, from infrastructure, environmental system utilization, user experience monitoring, uh, security networking, even those hidden server logs. I think this is actually quite important is that a lot of people uh, rely on syslog and uh, things that just come, come easily to them. But there are uh, critical uh, logs sitting on RS-232 ports of servers that go missed many times. Some of them are security related. And so by having visibility into that, not only um, it allows troubleshooting, but many of the security elements that may be uh, not sent out uh, through the network uh, level logging is actually made visible um, uh, by our device. And, uh, and that's why large uh, companies instrument all of their infrastructure uh, with our systems and collect this additional hidden server uh, previously hidden server data. And so I wanted to uh, make sure that that takeaway comes across as well, that there's a lot of data that people don't collect that's quite valuable. And uh, this is an example of uh, the Node Grid Data Lake and an app on top, uh, the Explorer app, uh, looking at simple things like a ping test. So you can say, you know, from a branch, either automate that ping test or, uh, or ask for the device to do it, and it will come into the data lake, it will get collected over time. Uh, so obviously, those are these are simple things, interface statistics, but even more sophisticated items like um, response time for Office 365. Right? Somebody calls and says, you know, my branch edge, uh, you know, Zoom calls aren't working well, or Microsoft Office 365 is slow. So having uh, the ability to make these uh, uh, make these uh, instrumentation and um, collect the data and log uh, log and uh, 
and then visualize it in different ways is uh, it's what's valuable. A lot of people have to rely on their SD WAN device to do these kinds of things, and this is just a glimpse. So, this is uh, you know things that you would need specialized devices for. Uh, our operating system it just makes it easy and straightforward um, for our, these different use cases. All right, so last uh, last couple of slides, and I'll turn it over to Renee. Uh, I wanted to also summarize with uh, again, what were those uh, customer needs that they needed a solution for? And obviously, you know, we talked about automation it requires that open guest OS APIs so that. Uh, no matter what kind of um, orchestration platform they're using, we can become a target for that orchestration to automate that infrastructure, enable that uh, all the different uh, open tools so that uh, we, we can enable the virtual presence for operations team uh, to not only do the troubleshooting, but even prevent downtime and then quickly recover from uh, the flexibility uh, without compromising security, uh, the you know the backup connection. So even if by mistake or uh, or otherwise the entire network goes down, the backup um, connections can allow the entire infrastructure to be rebuilt, and uh, and then ability to collect and leverage all that data. So uh, there is no one uh, vendor that puts all of these things together. It becomes a bag of Legos, and so from us, uh, our customers are able to buy. A complete solution and realize that that outcome and saves them a lot of time and uh, hassle and especially because we've taken care of all the security that's another uh, critical element of their purchase process and uh, I'm going to be uh, transitioning this over to Rene who's going to demo uh, the uh, a few of the elements of the platform uh, in a customer deployment use case, um, you know, this, is a, this is a typical picture of a high availability deployment of the NodeGrid service router with the different uh, OS elements and guest OS is loaded on top, uh, setting up tunnels to say a Zscaler or a, or a Palo Alto uh, and, um, and running all of these different uh, uh, pieces of software, again, all managed and orchestrated from the cloud. So. The hardware comes from us, the software comes from us, the cloud orchestration uh, uh, comes from us, and we can also allow other orchestration layers to be part of the picture. Uh, 